How do we cast the show? I get so many questions about casting. And hopefully this video will help you to answer, uh, help answer some of those questions for you. I am helping, I am reporting to you again today from Polly's beautiful costume shop and dressing room. And this is an audition tips, techniques, and advice video for all my students, past, present, and future. So many times students come up to me with all these very specific hypothetical questions about casting. Miss Bolstridge, let's say that you had somebody who came into the audition and they were really, really, really good at this and they did an awesome job at this, this, and this, but they kind of messed up on this part. What role would you cast them in? That question is impossible to answer and all of your hypothetical casting questions are impossible to answer. The reason for that is because it all depends. It depends on who auditions, what show I'm casting, what characters there are, how many roles are available. There are so many different factors that go into casting that it's impossible to say, well, I would do this if this happened and that if that happened. I could give you some general rules of thumb, but there are exceptions to every single rule. What I can tell you is that at an audition, we are not looking for perfection. We're looking for potential. If we were looking for perfection, there would be no point in holding rehearsals. So while it's true that your audition starts the minute you walk through the door, you shouldn't let that get you into a nervous bundle of nervousness because if you get nervous, it's, it's not going to show you off in your best light. Know that we're not looking for perfection. We are looking for potential. Okay, so go into the audition. Do the best that you possibly can and just trust the directors that we are going to make the best decisions that we can for the show that we have and the group that we have. Remember that the directors behind that table are on your side. If you are successful, our show is going to be successful. So there's never, ever, ever a moment where you're standing at a table of people who are judging you, hoping that you fail. Every single director behind that table, the choreographer, the music director, everybody, 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 everybody wants you to come in and blow them away. Everybody wants you to be the next best thing because the better you are, the more successful you are, the more successful we are. So we're on your side. A couple of pointers that I think that are really, really helpful. Be as prepared as you can. Be as professional as you can. And don't apologize. Don't ask to start over. Don't apologize. Don't come in and say, oh, I thought I knew the song, but I forgot it. I'm really sorry. I couldn't memorize the lines last night because of this, 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 or this. If you're not prepared, you probably shouldn't go on an audition. So you, you really, really need to go into things being very, very prepared. And if you aren't prepared, then ask to reschedule. Just say, I'm not prepared today. Is there any possible chance I could audition tomorrow? Another thing that a lot of students do, a lot of young people, and I've even seen adults do this, is that they come into the audition immediately and tell the director that they're sick. They come in right away and say, oh, I normally can hit all of these notes, but today I'm a little sick. Even if that's true, the director has heard that so many times that nobody's going to believe you. So again, if you're truly too sick to audition, come in and say, I'm really feeling under the weather. Is it possible for me to, aud to audition for you another day? But don't come in with excuses, okay? No excuses, no apologies, no starting over. Just go in and do the absolute best that you can. Now, how do I cast the show? Well, the answer is it's different for every single show that we do. In general, we have a list of all the characters. We see everybody come in for a play. We see, I see all the actors. I do callbacks. I do scenes. I have different people read with different people. And then for a musical, of course, we hear everyone sing. We see everyone dance. So since the musical is the next show that's coming up, I'll focus on that framework. So basically what will happen is, let's say we have 60 students audition. We hear everyone sing. We have everyone dance. We have everyone do a monologue. At that point, what we would do is, for example, let's just looking at the role of Matilda as an example, what we would most likely do is go through all of the, it takes us three or four hours, honestly, because we go through every single child score sheet for all three areas with 
absolute scrutiny and absolute thoroughness. We really, really give everyone genuine time and genuine consideration. There's never a time when we go, oh, not this person. Oh, not that person. Now out in the real world, they do that. That is, that is true. They will say, nope, 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 nope. We don't do that here because this is a school and I want the auditions to be an educational experience for you. So every single person gets thorough, thorough consideration in a very respectful manner. So we go through all the sheets and we'll say, okay, um, Matilda has to sing to belt to a high A, for example. I don't know if that's true, but let's just say it is. Matilda has to belt to a high A, so let's go through the, the, uh, the range sheets and check all the ranges and let's look at all of the female identifying students who belt to a high A. So we would separate all those students out and we'd say, okay, so out of the 50 students who auditioned, we have 13 girls who belted to a high A. So then we might take all those sheets and spread them out and say, okay, well, uh, how much dancing does this role have to do? And we would look at Miss Hacker would come in with her score sheet, not score sheets, they're not score sheets, they do, we just take notes, but she would look at her notes from the dance audition and say okay out of these 13 girls who all were able to belt to a high a um, these six girls were scored the highest on the dance audition and Matilda has to do X amount of dancing so out of these 13 let's look at these six so maybe we call those six girls back and we have them all do a monologue again or we have them act and then from there out of those six based on the quality of the callback, how well the vocal range is, the dancing, how strong the acting is. Out of those six girls, we'll choose one girl to be Matilda. And then the other five girls might get characters that are also within Matilda's vocal range. So for example, we're not having anybody called back for Violet because Violet's vocal range is very similar to Matilda's. So we might say, okay, these were the six girls after we filtered it down from 50. These 13 girls hit the notes, then these ones did the acting, these ones did the dancing. These are the six girls we were looking at for Matilda. We chose girl C. So let's give girl A will be Violet and girl B will be Lavender, etc. And out of those six that all made it through to that point, we would cast the other roles that are within Matilda's vocal range out of those six girls. Then we might go back to the other 13 and say, okay, now those 13 girls all hit those notes. Uh, Miss Honey has to sing to this level, so they also qualified for this. And Miss Honey doesn't have to dance. So let's take a look at some of the girls who whose audition uh, was really strong vocally, but their dance audition wasn't as strong. So let's take a look at them and consider them for Miss Honey or whatever the case may be. Or these girls didn't get the role of Matilda, but they all danced really, really well. And Mrs. Wormwood has to be a really strong dancer. So let's see which one of them would be the best Mrs. Wormwood. And so it all sort of falls out from there. And we do our very, very best to give as much consideration to everybody as we possibly can for every single role for which they they are eligible and we really take our time and we do a very thorough job now sometimes we don't agree sometimes maybe miss Wyatt thinks that girl C should be Matilda and I think girl D should be Matilda and miss hacker thinks that girl B should be Matilda and at that point we have to go back and look at things again and discuss and debate and weigh the pros and cons and maybe maybe it comes down to a, a different reason maybe all three of those girls were equally fantastic they all sang beautifully for Matilda their acting was good their dancing was good all three of them are perfect well then maybe at that point I might say well girl B is an eighth grader and it's her last show so she should get the part or maybe I would say girl C has paid her dues girl C has done three other shows and never had a lead role it's time for her to to, to be bumped up right so there might be a very wide variety of, of reasons why somebody got chosen, it doesn't even necessarily mean that there weren't other people who were also really good. There are other factors that we take in, into consideration. Maybe somebody came into the audition, blew us away vocally, but they were giggling and acting ridiculous during their dance audition, or they didn't have their monologue memorized, or they were very unfocused, or you know they're very unfocused in Miss Hacker's dance class, and she knows that that person's not going to be able to hold a lead through a two-hour rehearsal period. You know, Not that we're holding things against you but just being realistic uh, you know if we if we have you know 13 girls who are all super duper focused and you know girl number 14 is not focused she might not get that part so it, it all depends it's all it's all relative and, and it's different every time so 
it is very unhelpful for you to come to me to see me and say, what part should I audition for? Just come and audition and let me do my work from there because I absolutely assure you that I give you lots of time and lots of consideration. Even though you don't see that part, it absolutely happens. It's also really unhelpful for you to ask me a ton of hypotheticals. What if this happens? What if that happens? What if this person did a really good job at this? How would you cast them? It's, it's just too difficult to try to sit here and contemplate hypotheticals. Are there general rules of thumb? Yes. If, if two people are equally matched for a lead role and one's an eighth grader and one's a seventh grader, would I give it to the eighth grader? Yes. Um, in general, we do not give leads to first time auditioners, but does that mean that I've never given a lead to a first time auditioner? No, that does. That is not true. Sometimes a first time auditioner comes in and completely blows me away. So it's just all relative, you know, in an ideal world, I would like to give the lead roles to the people who have worked the hardest and paid their dues and gone through the program. But sometimes a person who's paid their dues and worked really hard and gone through the program, as much as I love that person, maybe their voice doesn't go to a high A. And even though I really, really love them, if I put them in that part, it would be setting them up for failure because they can't sing that note. So we don't want to set anyone up for failure. Our whole goal is to set everyone up for success. So yes, there are general rules like, such as eighth graders get preferential consideration over seventh graders. And we don't generally give lead roles to first time auditioners. However, all of these rules get broken at times. We try to stick to that, but it doesn't always work out that way. Everything is relative and we are very, very flexible. Flexibility is extremely important as an artist. I don't know any good directors who are not very, very flexible. So we have to be collaborative. We have to be flexible. We have to give consideration. So in closing, here's what I'd like to leave you with. Don't drive yourself crazy worrying about a thousand different hypotheticals. And don't drive me crazy asking about a hundred different hypotheticals. The only thing that you can do is come in and try your very best. Be focused. Be professional. Try your absolute best. If you mess up, keep going. Don't ask to start over. Don't apologize. And don't beat yourself up. We are not looking for perfection. We are looking for potential. Okay. And the last thing I would like to leave with, leave you with is to assure you that even though this is not the case out in the real world, out in the real world, they have cattle calls where you get treated like cattle because and that's why they're called cattle calls, because there's just too many people to treat everyone with respect. Well, not saying that they're going to be mean to you, but they might say, nope, 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 nope. You three stay, everybody else, goodbye, right? And they don't get full consideration. That's out in the real world when you're auditioning for Broadway. This is a school, and we're your teachers. Yes, I'm your director. Yes, Miss Hacker is your choreographer. Yes, Miss Wyatt is your, is your music director. But first and foremost, we're your teachers, and we care about you, and we want the casting process to be a learning experience for you. Above and beyond all else, we want you to learn from it. Even if you don't get cast, even if you don't get the part you want, if you learned from the experience, we consider your audition successful. So I want you to know that regardless of how the casting shakes out, if you don't get cast, it doesn't mean you're not talented. It doesn't mean we don't like you. It simply means that there wasn't a good fit for you this time around. I have had students come to an audition, not get cast, come back to a second audition and get a lead role because every show is different and the requirements of every show is are, are different. Meryl Streep has auditioned for things she didn't get into. Brad Pitt, George Clooney, Julia Roberts, all these actors have auditioned th for things that they didn't get into. If you don't get into something, if you don't get a part, it doesn't mean you're not talented. It doesn't mean we don't like you. All it means is that there wasn't a good fit for you this time around. But at our auditions here at Polly, I want to promise you three things. Number one, you are respected. Number two, you are appreciated and valued. And number three, you are treated, your audition is treated with absolute respect and dignity. There's never a point where we're just like, nope, not her, goodbye. There's never a point where we're sitting and saying, oh, this person's terrible or anything like that. We genuinely take the time to go through every single child's audition and discuss and evaluate in the most educational manner possible. 
and we treat your audition with such respect and such dignity. Even if you don't get the part you want, please be assured that you are valued and you are respected and we treat your audition with dignity. After the casting is over, if you would like feedback on your audition, I am very happy to give that to you. I will not answer questions about the casting, but I will give you feedback if you'd like. So for example, I wouldn't answer a question such as, how come I didn't get this part? Or if I did this differently, would I have gotten this part? I will not entertain questions such as such as those, but I will answer questions about your audition. So I might say something like, you did really well at these three things. Here are some things I think you could work on to improve for future auditions. So if you'd like that feedback after casting is over, I'm more than happy to give you that feedback. Feel free to email me to schedule an appointment to, to go over those things if you'd like to. But in the meantime, just prepare the best that you can, try your best, and remember that no matter what happens, this is a learning experience. And if you don't get cast this time, come back and try again. I hope this advice is helpful. Have a lovely, lovely day and have a great time preparing your audition.